morning, everybody. This is Sean Holman with uh, JP Magazine, and we are at the Cummins Corporate Headquarters here in Columbus, Indiana. And what we have today is, uh, I guess, a gaggle of uh, Wranglers. Uh, each one of these Wranglers represents a uh, different style of Cummins engine swap, so we thought we would meet the owners and kind of take you through each of these Jeeps. Um, there's a pretty good mix of them here. We have everything from uh, the venerable 4BTs and uh, QSB 3.3s, as well as the new R2.8 uh, Cummins Repower. So uh, if you want to walk along, we'll uh, meet each of these owners here. and. Uh, the, uh, here we go. How's it going, sir? Good morning. Good. What's your name? Cliff Fetterling. Cliff, nice to meet you. So uh, what year is your TJ? This is a 99. 99. And uh, can you tell us a little bit about your engine swap and uh, sure. some of the things that go into it? Sure. This uh, project started when um, my son, who's a student at University of Louisville, mechanical engineering, he kept saying, Dad, I wanted to, because he had seen these Jeeps with the diesel in yeah. and uh, he was interning at Cummins. He said, I want to do this project. And I said, that's a lot of work and a lot of money. <laughs> and he was making intern money, so um, he said, I'll split the cost with you. So I went out and found the Jeep uh, with the 4.0 gas engine in it and uh, found a good deal on this B QSB 3.3. And um, so we made it happen. It was a lot of work. It was a lot more work than I was expecting. And, and why the QSB 3.3 over some of the other engine swaps that were out there? Um, well, I worked at the time in electronic controls. Okay. So I knew a lot about the electronics and the controls, and I wanted something I could tinker with. So I definitely wanted an electronic engine. And um, you know, speaking with Will and some of the other guys, they had said this had been done before. Uh-huh. So that way I didn't have to recreate the wheel. I could just buy the conversion parts yep. from them and then do the install. And I thought that'd be the uh, easiest path. And do you know how much power you have out of it? Um, well, we started off with a 110 horsepower cow. Okay. But I've had some friends help me with it. Um, we've really bumped up the fueling tables and the torque tables. Um, so we haven't put it on the dyno or anything. So I don't know what's put it on now. But it's a lot better than yeah, what kind of fuel economy uh, are you seeing with it? I'm measuring it right about 25 miles per gallon, miles. just uh -huh. you know, average driving. Very cool. All right, well, thanks for uh, sharing your Jeep with us. We're going to move on to the next one. All right, appreciate it. Glad to be here. All right, and for those of you who uh, are JP, normal readers, and uh, know Fred Williams and watch Dirt Every Day, behind me is the Tube Sock. You guys might remember the Tube Sock project from the uh, Dirt Every Day episode where Fred drives it underwater. And uh, this obviously is, uh, for those of you who have been following the project, is the new R2.8, which is basically an F-series motor um, that has been, uh, engine, that has been turned into a conversion kit. This will be part of the new crate engine package that Cummins is working on as part of their new Cummins Repower. You can find more about this engine at uh, CumminsRepower.com. Uh, but it'll be uh, a zero miles, brand new Cummins four-cylinder 2.8 uh, 160 horsepower and 267 pound-feet of torque from Cummins with the uh, with the cow, and uh, it'll be probably the easiest path for anybody who wants to do a Cummins conversion into a Jeep Wrangler. Um, pretty much any year 99 and earlier uh, will be emissions legal, so 50 state emissions legal for anybody living in California, New York, or any of the other states that follow California's emissions. Um, and what's cool about this is it kind of think of it as the uh, E-Rod V8 from uh, General Motors where you'll be able to get an EO sticker and uh, put these Jeeps in and be totally legal uh, as far as uh, selling and uh, emissions and all the other things that you have to do. So Cummins is working on that. Now for those of you who are wondering about the 2000 and newer Jeeps, uh, that's something that Cummins is actively looking at right now. Uh, those are OBD2. So uh, there's a little bit that goes, uh, a little more that goes into it, but that's something that they want to support as well. So you can probably imagine the OBD2 version of this engine for 2000 and later uh, TJs will be around uh, a little while after they get everything launched with the R2.8. So uh, that's tube sock and the R2.8. So let's, uh, let's move on to the next one here. Good morning. Good morning. What's your name? Kevin Silovich. How's it going? Pretty good. So uh, tell us a little bit about your build and your Jeep. Obviously, you've got a uh, 4BT in there. That is correct. So I started with a Frito-Lay step van I found off Craigslist. 
chopped it up Red just band. to get the engine out of it. <laughs> um, everything's just piece part. We've got a Dodge uh, or a Ford uh, Dan 60 up front, GM 14 bolt rear, cool. uh, Dodge NV 4500 transmission, Atlas Advanced Adapters transfer yep. case in it. Um, Sounds yeah. like you went through the who's who of parts catalogs and yep. grabbed all the cool stuff. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> so uh, what I did is I changed out the turbo to an HE 341. Uh, did a gover spring modification to do the 3200 gov spring and the Denny stage 2 fuel pin. 100% uh, rebuilt injectors and yep. injector pump. So. so where are you at power wise? If you had to guess. My goal in the initial build was 400 foot pounds. Okay. I don't know if I'm there yet or not. Okay. I'd love to get out on a dyno and see. Uh, but uh, yeah. And then what do you uh, what are you seeing for mileage? <laughs> uh, before I do the modifications <laughs> or after? Uh, fresh build, I was getting like 18 on the road. Yeah. Right now, I'm getting about 10. <laughs> so uh, yeah, yeah, she's more. She's turned into a trail vehicle over yeah. the last three years. I've rolled this thing four times now. So you're in it for the fun. Yes, I'm in it to go wheel. What uh, what gearing are you running with? It's uh, 456 in the app. And, the and uh, what tires? Are you got Nitto Trail Grapplers. Yep, Nitto Trail Grapplers 40s. 40s. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, this is uh, this is a pretty sweet rig. Thanks. Appreciate it. Thank you for sharing it. Thank you. All right. You you can tell he's not having any fun on the trail at all. Uh, this is this is a pretty fun one right here. Now it, we're gonna go from from awesome trail rash trail vehicle to one of the cleanest, nicest LJs you might ever see. And uh, good morning. What's your name? Jeremy Taylor. Jeremy Taylor, and has this uh, gorgeous orange uh, LJ here. And you know, I think that what struck me about this is when we when we saw it this morning is clearly you took a lot of pride in making this very OE like. Everything is super clean. Um, the wiring is gorgeous. Um, Jason just showed you guys the license plate on here. Not a 4BT, <laughs> so you must be running a QSB 3.3. It is QSB 3.3. Okay. Yep. Tell us a little bit about your modifications and. Uh, maybe what your power level is and, and uh, drivability and fuel economy. Sure. Well, that was the idea with this build was to try to do as, uh, as factory-like as possible. Um, I've done a couple before this, so this is hopefully the last one <laughs> and do it right last Enjoy time. it, right? Um, but the QSB, conservatively, we're about 125 horse and 300 foot-pounds. Okay. Um, Calibration-wise, you know, trying to get some smoothness into it, yep. more automotive feel. They're industrial engines, it's hard to to get there sometimes when you start with that engine. Sure. But, uh, overall, it came out pretty clean. And uh, 37 inch tires, it is a stock 2006 uh, Rubicon LJ. Okay. It's a Dana 44s. So you got stock axles in this still? Stock axles, all chromoly. Yep. Uh, actually, re geared it to 373. Oh, wow. Okay. Which is something that folks don't do, right? You wouldn't yeah, think about that. Yeah, actually went down. But uh, to get the cruise range uh, with the six speed transmission, uh, yeah. it's a good highway. So, which, which transmission are you using? It's 4, an NSG, uh, NSG, oh, NSG 370. 370, okay. Yep, stock transmission. Yep. And have you had any issues uh, with torque output or, or ba throw bearings or no, much play, I, anything? I've actually run that transmission in the previous couple of Jeeps. Okay. And, uh, it's really held up well for me. I yeah. like the six speed. Very cool. Yeah, th this, is a, this is a beautiful Jeep. It's done a, done a fantastic job. Even, I mean, you can see the level detail here. I mean, it's just, just nice little touches like this just to show that. You know, Jeremy and crew have, uh, have really taken it to uh, to the next level in, in detail and stuff, and it really shows. Jeremy, thanks for sharing your Jeep with us today. Appreciate it. All right, we'll come down to this uh, little TJ here. Yeah. Tell us, uh, what's your name? Mike Ruth. Mike, nice to meet you. Sure. So uh, tell us a little bit about your swap. It's pretty much uh, a pretty stock 3.3 liter, nothing special. I tried uh -huh. to make it. Uh, as as much OEM as possible. Yeah. So I've got the OEM AC on it, and I never finished the lines on it. But but in theory, get the it, lines that it, should, it, should work. That's right. Yeah. Uh, it's and it's got the condenser in front and everything right where it was. Um, so uh, it's it's very standard. There's nothing special. I did, you know it's no not redneck, not jack wagon, <laughs> yeah, right. what have you. No no dash lights. It's got ABS. Um, very drivable. My daughter. Put thirty thousand miles on it. I've oh, put wow. about five thousand on How it. How many she, years uh, since you've done the swap? Uh, about two and some okay. change. Yeah. Wow. So she she drove it every day to high school, except for today. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, we get about uh, twenty eight miles to the gallon. The way we drive it, it's got three hundred seven gears in it. Awesome. Stock AX fifteen. And the AX fifteen's held up well, huh? Absolutely. Yeah. Great. Yeah. yeah.
And it's only a, it's 110 horsepower, yeah. nothing you know outstanding, but uh, we well, got tons of torque and, and super drivable plus. Yeah. Torque, yeah. Very, Very cool. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, uh, nice to meet you. Thanks again for uh, walking us around your Jeep. And then we'll take you guys down here to the uh, the last one. And you may remember this one from yesterday. Uh, for those of you who watched our videos yesterday, and uh, what's your name? Will Harvey. Will and you guys at Rapid Prototype, you guys did the install on this, correct? Yeah. Yeah. We were commissioned by Cummins yep. to do the install. And so this is the new R2.8. This is basically uh, this looks a little bit different than tube sock because this is an earlier prototype. It's kind of a proof of concept that these guys put together to show what the R2.8 could look like. Uh, but if you want to walk us through your install on it and, and uh, some of the high points, great. Okay, so you know we started obviously with the R2.8. Um, Steve um, came to us and said, "Hey, we're trying to put a demonstrator together. Um, don't want to show Jeep. We just want something to demonstrate yeah. emissions so they can." Yeah get um, all that through the EPA. Um, we have a little bit of experience doing this sort of thing. Actually, all these Jeeps here have some of our components on them in some form or the other, whether it's transmission adapters or charger coolers or, or whatnot. So that's that's how the Cummins guys knew to come to us. Cool. Um, well, where are you guys based? Um, actually, just north of here in Edinburgh, Indiana. Okay, what's your uh, what's your website? It's uh, rpemachining.com. rpemachining.com, yep. and you make a lot of the conversion kit pieces for for guys wanting to do the yeah. conversions into the yeah. Jeeps. Yeah. So our main our main business is prototype parts for uh -huh. companies like Cummins and Allison sure. Transmission. But being a Jeep fan and an off roader, um, kind of dabbled in this, and um, we're actually uh, uh, starting a new company called Axis Industries to kind of focus on taking advantage of Cummins hard work releasing these and you know getting some of our products out there to the public. Very cool. Now, we, we've been driving this Jeep for a couple days now. We probably put, I don't know, 100 miles on it or something like that. And, and we're really impressed with the 2.8 and how drivable it is and 160 horsepower and 267 uh, foot-pounds of torque. Uh, it just it feels great, works well. Uh, and this Jeep's cool because it's all stock, so no weird lights on the dash, the tack works. The uh, you know clutch is perfect on it, and it, it yeah. other than sounding like a diesel, it drives just as you'd expect. It. Yeah, there's a lot of hard work and a lot of details yeah. going to making it you know OE like right? yeah, right. versus just somebody popping something together and sticking it in there. Well, cool, appreciate you walking us through, and uh, nice to meet you. All right, uh, Steve, you want to come over real quick? Hey. Uh, for those of you who don't know, this is Steve Sanders, and. Uh, he works at Cummins and he put this whole little group together. So we're gonna be out driving today and, and all that. And, and uh, Steve is uh, sort of oversees the Cummins Repower and the R2.8 program. So uh, your email, if anyone wants to contact yeah. you, no. <laughs> fine, fine. <laughs> yeah, one, two, one, two. <laughs> so uh, Steve, uh, I guess you guys still have a survey up on your website? Yeah, on CumminsRepower.com. We've got a survey running. Uh, you know, obviously we want feedback on this. But we want to hear about what else you want to do. If you want older vehicles specifically, or something that would uh, be better suited for a six-seven or a five-liter, we want to hear it. We're constantly monitoring that. Uh, since uh, Facebook Live last night on JP yep. Magazine, we had a lot of hits on that, so that was good. Uh, a lot, a lot of people still ask me for that, so <laughs> that's a good thing. Uh, but yeah, today's going to be a great day. Uh, the weather is kind of unfortunate, but the Midwest uh, winter—it's December. It's all not but one of Jeep has doors. So yeah, right. we're good. <laughs> we're good. So again, if you guys have any questions about the uh, 3.9, the QSB 3.3, or the R2, the new R2.8, um, check out some of our posts and videos on JP from yesterday, and you can actually see we have all three engines on an engine stand. You can kind of see the packaging difference. Um, the 2.8 weighs 330 pounds less than a uh, than a B series engine, so it kind of gives you an idea of you know being able to package it and less weight over the axle and all that. Um, but any other questions you have, feel free to post up on here, and uh, Steve and I will uh, take a look during the day, and we'll answer as many as we can for you guys. So once again, really appreciate you joining us this morning on a JP Magazine Facebook Live, and here we are in a beautiful, sunny uh, Columbus, Columbus, Indiana. Columbus, Indiana at the Cummins uh, headquarters, right? <laughs> so thanks very much.